Hi, YouTube. Hope everyone is doing great. Today's episode, part two of our look at the Renaissance child prodigy, Sophonies by Anguissola, continues with a focus on this female painter's style and a continued look at relatable context. My first exploration of this child artist was in 2017 for a term paper, which I ended up writing with a phenomenally high fever. So, a fresh 2020 search felt right. Sophonies by Anguissola, a homeschooled child genius. Last time, we covered the high Renaissance context and literary influences of the young Italian female portraitist, Sophonies by Anguissola. The Anguissola adults consciously and ardently contributed to a development of two or more child geniuses. Sophonisba's sisters, Elena and Lucia, were also fabulous oil painters. Amir Kader's post as a public artworks director gave him a great advantage as an educator, as he was in continuous contact with the hottest artists of the day and up to date with, on the newest technical methods of paint. This discussion also, also sheds much light on the important link between homeschooling and the grooming of child geniuses. The Anguissola, a distinct Renaissance family. Anguissola's arrival at Habsburg Court, Madrid in 1559 coincides with an important 16th century political transition in which courts and salons prepared women for social and intellectual roles. This change marks an increased codependence between nobility and royalty as absolutist governments began to form across Europe. The deliberate choice to select areas of study that surpassed those of other middle-class families affirms the intellectual distinction between the Anguissola and other middle-class families. Circa Pastoralis, 1566. Relevant to Anguissola's counter-reformation context were two bowls that directly affected all Italian Renaissance females. Bonifaci VIII's 1298 Periculoso, which decreed the enclosure of all religious females, was reaffirmed after the Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563, during the period in which Anguissola departed for Madrid. Pius V, Circa Pastorales, 1566, decreed that non-cloistered females should also take vows and practice enclosure, particularly the females who could not afford dowries for husbands. Amilcare Anguissala, father, teacher, and mentor. Amilcare facilitated his children's natural genius and creativity via a well-rounded humanist education that stressed the return to classical studies, keeping with Alberti's emphasis in classicism as a required area of study for all artists. For the most part, the Anguissola kids were homeschooled. Anguissola's technical training involved additional tutoring from Campi, Gatti, and Michelangelo. In the Renaissance, artistic training focused heavily on a range of expressive emotions. What are today's steps in teaching art? Teaching art in the 21st century. Amir Kari's approach to homeschooling was tailored for young artists and very much like today's modern art classroom. In the 21st century, capturing spontaneous expressions on canvas is still a focal objective. A thorough facilitator seeks to inspire even the most artistically inept to create from imagination. Going back to the past to examine instances of Greek and Roman temples, Egyptian sculpture, or ancient cave paintings teaches students about important aspects of visual message and how to communicate with the spectator. Other key steps in the creative process include collaboration with peers, brainstorming, and planning. Lombard School of Painting, Milanese and Venetian Painters. 
The diverse leadership and natural landscape of Cremona and its nearby regions had much to do with how diverse painting styles developed and evolved. The Gonzaga, serious art patrons, governed Mantua, a republic state. Some artists of the Lombard School of Painting included Moretto da Brescia, 1498-1554, and Romanino, 1485-1566, who were both, during Anguissola's time, highly skilled painters stylistically linked to painters from Pavia, Genoa, and Verona. Other painters included Vincenzo Foppa, 1427 to 1516, an early pioneer of the Lombard style, Giovanni da Milano, 1325 to 1370, Gentile da Fabriano, 1370 to 1427, Pisanello, 1395 to 1455, Giovanni Ambrogio Figino, 1551 to 1608, Giampaolo Lomazzo, 1538-1592, Camilo Procaccini, 1551-1629, Andrea Mantenga. Spanish Conquest of Milan. On the other hand, Bergamo and Brescia are part of the Venetian West, separated from Milan by a short boat ride's distance. Two distinct yet related regional styles developed, both Lombard in character. These styles related to a series of historical events that both unified and divided this region. After the Gonzaga rule, Francis I lost the Battle of Pavia, 1525, to the Habsburg king, Charles V, father of Philip II. The Sforza governed Milan until 1535, when the Spaniards came to power. Although that battle, which ultimately involved Governor Anguissola of Como, occurred when Anguissola was only three, it affected her life till maturity. The Lombard School of Painting Style The Lombard School style developed separately from the Bolognese, Florentine, and Genoese schools, and directly from the international Gothic style. Catherine de' Medici's devotional Book of Hours is an example of the miniaturist popularity during Counter-Reformation. The Lombard school stressed aesthetically pleasing aspects of form and very poetic observations, as miniature paintings in medical texts and prayer books revealed. Lombard painting traits exploited asymmetry, vivid diverse colors such as orange, green, and purple, and flat abstraction. The Lombard School, Anguissola's personal style, counter-reformation and related intellectual debates further challenged Anguissola's professional context. The Karachi ousted mannerism and ushered in the Baroque style. Anguissola's own mannerist style featured elongated form, vivid view, artifice, conflict, invalid space, and realism, juxtaposed against idealism. And Whistler's new Gente Ordinaria theme and Donesca Mano in group portraiture, Chan Vasari, the famous Renaissance art critic. Examples of Anguissola's finesse touch are Minerva's raised forefinger to protest loss in the chess game and Minerva fingering a pendant in Amicare, Minerva, and Azrubale. The new style that overtook Lombard mannerism was the pious Bologna school style, where artistic expression was spiritually devout and grew more so during the pertinent contents context of counter-reformation. The Karachi focused on artistic renewal and humanity through emphasis of sacred scenes. Anguissala's personal style, playfulness. Anguissala's uniquely expressive style emerges from within a context where she engages spectators through an individualized stress on gender, status, and a victorious heritage theme. Let's go back to the chess game portrait and summarize overall style. The chess game asserts ties to domesticity and artistic victorious heritage. Three fashionably coiffed graceful sisters convey nobility, artifice, and idealized contrived space. 
in manner of style, with long, slender necks and graceful fingers. The painting strikes Anguissola's trademark playfulness and adds drama related to tournament, where Minerva protests the fatalistic move with a raised forefinger as Lucia and Europa laugh. Family is allegorical of the Anguissola painters. Anguissola's personal style, boldness. Boldness is another vital aspect of Anguissola's branding. She asserts positive stance for later female artists like Gentileschi and Serrani. Anguissola defies the controversial bias against female painters by inventing her own persona through a dynamic use of props and innovative genre, family portraiture. Anguissola responds to controversy with the elements of lively emotion. Part of her message is about not conforming to all of society's rules. Her playful tournament motif is often offset by a dutiful theme, education. Therefore, Anguissala mixes the reality of social rituals like coming of age with imaginative invenzione. Self-portrait with Bernardino Campi, 1550. Anguissala's playfulness and daring boldness is also evident where she conforms to Alberti's concept of mixing beauty with emotion and complexity. As style matures, her use of color darkens. Anguissala elevates female painters and portraitist status via an adept use of iconography in her 1550 oil on canvas, self-portrait with Bernardino Campi. It reveals the artist painting her master, who is painting her, and thereby she reverses the roles of gender. Anguissala's mastery as teacher on canvas relays a message for a specific future royal audience, Habsburg Court. Drama at Habsburg Court. If life for Anguissala and Cremona offered peace, stardom, and stability, Madrid may have bought anything but. And there she shared the limelight with other painters through collaboration. Habsburg Court was an especially important choice for the young artists who wanted to make a difference, as the ladies at the House of Habsburg were active in and focal to the arts. Margaret of Austria, 1480 to 1530, Mary of Hungary, 1505 to 1558, and Catherine of Austria, 1507 to 1578. Sophonies by Anguissala, A New Style Emerges. In the months leading up to Anguissala's departure from Madrid, a new painting style emerges. The colors on canvas lose some brightness, and animated expression is rather reserved. However, Anguissala's flow of movement is still visible. Let's stop here and continue with the third part to our series on Sophonies by Anguissala next time. Hope you've enjoyed this, this discussion on behind the scenes of a rising child prod prodigy, Sophonies by Anguissala. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.